In the course of my HVAC career, I ran into a few circumstances where you would get a very bad delta T, the way you measure it, but the unit would be running perfectly. In this video, I'm gonna describe what was happening in those circumstances. Quickly before we get into the video, I'll be announcing a new giveaway for this month coming up real soon and announcing the winner of last month's giveaway. I'm going to be out of town for a couple days, so I'll do that video once I get back. I'll be visiting a good friend of mine and maybe I'll show you guys who that is once I make that visit. Let's talk about the first circumstance where you might have a Delta T that looks really bad, but the unit's running perfectly and why that happens. The first circumstance I'm going to go into is a unit I was on several years ago at least 10 years ago. It was an older Goodman split system. Well, I say it was older, but it was a mismatched system. It was a very old Goodman air handler matched up with a more a new Goodman dry charge unit outside. It was a heat pop. And it was R22 dry charge system, which is a system that was supplied to people in the interim between the R410A only era and the 22 and 410A era. They made a few dry charge systems so people could purchase R22 systems. And how they got around that was they said they were dry charged. They had no charge in them, but you could put R22 in them if you wanted. And that's what everybody did. If you had POE oil in the compressor, you could use 407C if you wanted to feel a little bit better about it. Although R22 is superior to 407C in those applications by a little bit, not a whole lot, but enough to put in the R22 if you have it. So that system actually worked very well. I installed it, classy installer that I am. I put those two things together because that's what the customer wanted. It was a rental property and they want to spend as little as possible and keep that thing going. And the indoor unit, even though it was really, really old, like 1988, it was in pretty good shape. At that moment, later on, it would not be as good of shape, but that's a different story. So that system was functioning fine. It was cooling the house. And one day I got a call, a late night call, new babies at home, of course, and the system is not performing. So I knew it was blowing air. I went inside, I said it was blowing air, but it's definitely warm in here. So I went outside and saw the condenser and the condenser was rejecting heat very well. See inside there was a very low temperature split between the return and supply. Now, try to piece these things together while I tell you about them. You tell me what the answer is, perhaps. In the comments, pause the video and say, I think it's this. I went back outside and hooked up my gauges, and everything looked pretty good for being a mismatched system. Everything was running pretty well. So I thought to myself, what was the common problem with Goodman air handlers from 1988 through pretty much the early 2000s? If anyone has worked on a lot of Goodman air handlers, I had videos on YouTube dating back to the very beginning of when I was on YouTube talking about the infamous Goodman blower relay. Now this relay would fail and it would actually deform. You would actually see this black relay turn white from the heat and it would power up the heat strips and the heat strips and blower would run constantly. There's a fail safe on a lot of heat strips, so even if the blower relay fails and is sending power to the heat strip some way, you'll still have the blower on because the heat strips have a wire going back to the blower that will turn them on if they are left on. It's a little complicated, but if you look at the blower relay in question, you see there are normally open and normally closed contacts, and whenever that relay closes to power the blower, that open contact goes to the heat strips. So when the blower is not powered, but the heat strips are still on, as a failsafe, it powers the blower. So this relay, it failed a lot. It failed so much that I had a dealer from East Coast, or actually the guy who worked at East Coast, who knew a little bit about HVAC, kept four of them at his house to replace on an annual basis because they would go bad so often. So what was happening, the AC was running very well. The problem was the heat strips were running simultaneously. So whatever cooling was being done was negated by the heat strips. So while a great dehumidifier 
it was a very poor air conditioner. So replacing that blower relay made the system ship shape again. The second situation is, it's tricky. It's not extremely difficult to figure out, but if you are hasty, you will miss this. You have a system. You're measuring delta T. You want to see return grill temperature and supply grill temperature. You're down in a space. The unit is elsewhere. Maybe it's up in the attic. Maybe it's in a closet, whatever. Mechanical room or crawl space, North Carolina. You measure the delta T. Going into the return grill, you have 78 degrees. System's not cooling. That's why they called you. Maybe it's 80 degrees. Coming out the other side, you'll notice that it's 79, 80 degrees as well. So obviously there's something wrong. Maybe it's a loss of charge. So you head outside. What you find is a system that's working perfectly. Suction pressure might be a little bit high. So what do you think's going on right there? System's not cooling the house, yet it seems to be doing a decent job running wise from outside. Although the pressures might be a little bit higher than normal, especially on the suction side. So you head back inside. It's always good to check the air coming into the air handler and the air exiting the air handler. Take your delta T there. Now, if you would have gone to the air handler, let's say it's up in the attic. By the time that air comes from the 80 degree house to the air handler, maybe it's 84 degrees. And coming out of the air handler, maybe it was 68. So you're getting a 16 degree delta T, which is pretty good. The problem is, that when you go to the air handler and measure it, maybe the temperature is 97. Because what's pretty common around here, something gets into the flexible return duct and rips it in half, or someone doesn't do a very diligent job putting the return together, maybe the actual helix of the flex isn't taped and it pops off a collar, either on the return box on the unit, which is easy to see, or maybe farther down the line where it's much more difficult and you're getting attic air into the system instead of the air from the house. And that'll cause your delta T to still be, well, it can waver because of the humidity content in the air. But if you have 17 degrees there, you might be getting all the way back down to the room temperature of 80 from 97. So you had to check the periphery, measure temperatures from several different locations if you're sensing a problem. Because in a very hot, hot attic, you can have an instance where you have a great gathering of temperature between the return grill and the unit, especially if the blower speed is set too low for the application. The more time the air is passing through the duct going slowly, it's gonna pick up more heat because that duct, even though it's insulated, is still a heat exchanger. That outside attic air is transferring that heat into that duct. Now it's a slower rate because of the insulation, but still transferring some heat. And the longer it has traveling through the attic, the air is gonna acquire more heat. So make sure you're checking those things in case of an attic application. So I hope these two instances helped you guys. I hope maybe you say, hey man, maybe that was happening at this house. Or maybe when you're at a house one day, if you work in the south, these applications will arise one day. And hopefully it's not the crawl space unit. Maybe it's a gaping rust hole in the crawl space unit, you never know. Hope you guys enjoyed it. May God bless all of you, and I'll see you on the next video. Save 8% off your order at truetechtools.com by using the Shop Talk discount code.